Well, thank you, Paige. And to our audience today, thank you for inviting Mark and I into your office or home. And just like Paige said a moment ago, we read the comments you write in the end of session survey that she spoke about. And that's exactly why we're presenting this material today. We believe that showing you how we look at a reserve study will help you understand your own reserve study and be better able to communicate and implement an effective reserve plan at your association. We want to set you up for success. This is how we're going to divide our time today. I'll start out by laying a bit of introductory foundation before we open up a couple of reserve studies. Now, reserve studies are built on components, and this is the National Reserve Study Standards three-part test that defines which components appear in a reserve study. Each has to be a common area of maintenance responsibility, needs to be reasonably predictable in timing and cost, and it needs to have a cost that is significant to the association. And remember, these costs come with the construction of the property, the property type. These costs are not board choices. The roofing, the asphalt, the painting, the pool, the elevator, everything at your association that's common area is gradually deteriorating and you'll need to budget for their replacement because mother nature and father time are real forces and they don't negotiate. They're eventually going to tear your association down to the ground. Repairs and replacement costs are inevitable if you want to maintain your real estate investment. Now, one of the three results of a reserve study is the multi-year funding plan. And as we create funding plans and the examples we show today, we're guided by the four principles you see on the screen. The funding plan needs to provide sufficient cash for the projects that you're going to fund through reserves. It needs to be stable through the years. It needs to be even and fairly distribute the reserve funding burden over the owners. And it fundamentally needs to be fiscally responsible. And I do want to remind you that the board isn't responsible for the costs. The costs, again, come with the property. The board and management does have a choice about how the association homeowners pay for that deterioration. <clears throat> and it's going to be either through ongoing, through reserve funding, waiting and getting special assessed, or doing nothing, waiting and doing nothing, and watching the property values decline. That's your three choices ahead of you. Now, regarding the goal that we're shooting for and how you measure it, reserve fund strength is measured by percent funded. And that's a term that describes the comparison of reserve cash on deposit to the reserve deterioration already at the association. And that's percent funded is a term that we explain more completely in other webinars, such as our Reserve Studies 102, which you can find on our website. So we just want to remind you that even though your funding plan one day, the 40% of you may create on your own, may pencil out to have sufficient cash if there's no margin, you're going to likely have a special assessment. That's because things don't generally occur exactly according to plan. And if you have no margin, when your percent funded is down in the 0 to 30% funded range, when you have low margin, many of those clients, 30 40 50% of those clients, end up having special assessments. Now, the other is true. The special assessments are very rare when the percent funded is high, above 70% funded. And that's because you have there the cash very close to the amount of deterioration at the association. It means you're carrying a little more cash in the reserve fund, but the benefit is no special assessment. You've got a little bit of margin. And for those of you who've been with us in prior sessions, you've seen us talk about the different types of reserve studies, a full update with site visit and update no site visit. But for what we're going to be talking about today, all three types of reserve studies provide the same results. So whether you're creating or using a full create from scratch reserve study or one of the two update types of reserve studies, the kind of results we're talking about today are going to apply. And I just want to give you a little background. There was a research paper that was done, a research report done in April of 2020 called Breaking Point. It's basically how to deal with deterioration 
of your association over time. And the conclusion was for a building to age successfully, you need to update your reserve study regularly, fund reserves as recommended, spend reserves as recommended, and get some outside help with an infrastructure inspection by an architect or engineer. Now remember, this was done in April 2020. What happened in June of 2021? That's when Champlain Tower South fell. And Champlain Tower South was basically breaking all four of these rules up until a year prior to when they actually collapsed. So this is a big deal and these this is a real recommendation. So that's why we're here today. Talk about updating your information, getting the information, getting comfortable with that information, and funding and spending the reserves as needed. Now, there's two types of reports you can get. There's an engineering and architectural structural report, and there's reserve studies. Today, we're going to talk about reserve studies. That's the budget and cash flow management, where we're dealing with the components and making sure that you have the cash to get those projects done on time. The structural analysis is going to be able to tell you if that hairline crack is just cosmetic or significant and any recommendations made in that engineering report. Those recommendations are then absorbed into the reserve study so you have a cash flow plan to be able to get that project done. And that brings us to the heart of our program today, diving into two different reserve studies. We're going to uh, use our online reserve calculator tool, you plan it to show you what's going on. And the first one is going to be a townhome association built in 1979, so 40 plus years old, 34 units, five buildings, pool and spa, not too big, not too small, not too complex, but a nice typical association across the country. So Mark, ready to dive into looking at what this reserve study is and how we can talk about reserves in real life? Hey, Robert. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's take a look. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to crack open you plan it. This is the screen that you'd be welcome to if you were a portfolio manager with a number of different associations on the system. So let's open up the five building townhome, open up you plan it, and here we go. Starts with components, then we have some financial information, you can deal with the funding plan, some custom work you can do here, and then all the tables and charts. But let's talk, let's start with the components, which again are the foundation of every reserve study. Yeah, Robert, I think everything is going to start with the components. Well, what you guys are looking at here is you got your component names so we can identify what we're, lo what we're looking at. You've got some quantities, tell us how much square footage or how many of an item you guys got. Useful life is what we expect out of a component uh, when it's constructed correctly and under normal wear and tear. And then your remaining useful life is what's actually the ground truth. And then the current cost, that's the cost for the year of your study. There's a lot of different ways to work with these components to make sure that you guys have a good funding plan and that we have a good solid way forward for the association. One way we do that is through something called coordinated projects. You can see asphalt here. Uh, maybe when we're actually on the ground, the seal repair is holding up a little better than we thought, but we want to put some of these elements together to make sure that we don't do double work. So we coordinated some of these components and made it so that it all goes down at once. Uh, it does save the association a little bit of money to do it all at once, and it really cuts down on the inconvenience to home co homeowners, especially when you're dealing with something like asphalt. So that's one way we can make sure that we're flexible and make sure that we're getting a good plan for the homeowners association. Yeah, basically trying to be wise. And uh, one thing I was seeing here, not only the asphalt, but the roadway system. We have the asphalt at 25 and 5, and when you're going to get to the point of resurfacing the asphalt, you redo your concrete swale down the middle of the driveway. So just trying to plan in advance to help you have a good plan at your association. Yeah, that, that's a great way to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Another way we can affect our planning is we're phasing out a, a project. Uh, sometimes projects can be split up into different phases so that we're not doing everything at once. Uh, if you've ever dealt with a maybe a developer turning things over in phases, same kind of principle. Uh, what's a good example we can give them here, yeah, Robert? Roofing broken down. Yeah, we've got a uh, flat roof, the center portion, the east portion, those are on the same cycle, 15 and two. And looks like 
north and south are on the same cycle 15 and 8. And the flat roof is all by itself, but put together some basic modules here, but uh, overall for all the buildings here at the association, I think five buildings, split them up into two type of categories, the 15 and 2s and the 15 and 8s. Yeah. So those two are good examples of, hey, sometimes we put things together to make it a little more easy. And sometimes we break things apart for economic reasons. Uh, another way we can break things apart is by providing an allowance. We don't have a need to replace everything at once. Maybe we can do an annual allowance over time. Uh, this component here for the gutters is a great example of that. Yeah, you got your gutters and downspouts. We, we'll split them up. We'll give a, an allowance every year. It still goes into the reserve, stop, reserve fund, but it's a way to kind of spread out the cost and make it a little more uh, palatable for the homeowners. Yeah, but uh, this one, I can see it clearly on my view, but we're not doing all the gutters, but every five years, we're going to do a chunk. So every five years, we don't know which ones, which places, but every five years, it seems like a reasonable pattern at this association to dive in and do some gutter work. You know, one of the things that's maybe a little also challenging to see on this view is what's important. Uh, it's important when you have a plan to have your priorities set up. I think one of our mm -hmm. tables, our significance yeah. table, was probably one of my favorites to look at to kind of figure that out. I like that. Okay, here's the significance table. I just want to let everyone see that there's tables here that showed just exactly what we did show. The list of components, all those kinds of things. But you look and see, well, yeah, some of the projects are big and expensive, some are small, but Mark's point, which ones are important, that's what you get here. Yeah, I like this view because it brings my eyes quickly when I look at these percentages to what is really driving the reserve fund. You know, you can go back and forth on some of the components and they take up a lot of your time. And I think this really helps to prioritize. Boards are busy. They're busy people. Uh, it's a volunteer basis. This isn't their full-time job. And I think it's important to make sure that folks know, you know, what their priorities are and what their attention needs to be on. Yeah, I'm looking at this one. You can see that there's a few projects. The irrigation controller is almost nothing. Trash gates are almost nothing. But boy, makes it real clear that stucco, wood shingle siding, wood shingle siding, partial replacement, those add up. That's uh, eight and a half, the 27, 37, and 36% of all reserve funds are going to the, uh, the building envelope here, the siding type projects. What's some other big ones? Oh, roofing, of course. 11 plus three plus two plus another 3% here, 3% here for the West building. Now that's adding up to 20-ish percent. Plumbing is a big deal at this association. Termite treatment is a big deal. And because yeah, you might even think that ah, termites are just an afterthought. But 8% of all the reserve funds are going to termite treatment. It's not that big of an expense, but it happens every 12 years. And so um, that makes it more significant because although this is, plumbing is a very expensive project, only happens every 30 years. So this brings that into perspective. Yeah, I think it's uh, a use, just a good way to show how useful this planet tool is. I think uh, what most people are worried about when they look at our reserve study is the dollar amounts. What do you think we can look at some funding uh, for these folks here, Robert? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's pop over to, well, let's start with the control panel, how much money they have. Uh, they have a little bit under $300,000 to start with and default with 1% interest, 3% inflation. And we go to the recommendations page and start to look at what their plan is. Just under $4,900 a month with a 3% gradual increase in their funding every year. And you can see that pretty much no expenses in the first year, but the expenses start to mount in the five, six, seven, eight year range. And that's what they're up against. So what do you want to do? Well, let's 
this is probably what we're looking at as a full funding plan. Let's right. take a look at what a baseline funding might look like. Okay. Baseline funding is, for those of you new, baseline funding is just barely to be cash positive. So if you're taking notes, write down 4890 per month to fully fund the reserves to have that margin we spoke about earlier. But if you want to baseline fund, which means just have enough cash that you stay above zero, down to 3660 per month. And so it's a lower, you're putting less into the reserve fund, but look at all the years that you're down below 30% funded. Those are the years that there's a pretty fair chance you're going to get hit with a special assessment. Again, because the costs are there. Uh, there's no avoiding the costs. If you're too optimistic in your planning and you don't have the money, the cash in reserves, you're going to need a special assessment. So the cash is there. Costs are fixed. Just a choice of how you pay for it. Yep. I always like to look at the baseline funding because I want to know where it is and I want to have a good concept of where the bottom is, but baseline funding is not typically my goal. Yeah. We'd like to point our clients towards a safe future. And if you remember those charts earlier, uh, we don't like our clients down in the zero to 30% range. We like them. And you could almost say that it's um, evening out the funding to, can't see it, it's the full funding button is right there. We have to change the zooming. There we go. There we go. So 3660 to 4890, that's about where this association needs to be in their their budgeting. Yeah, I think it's good that they know their they know their upper limit and they know their lower limit. One thing that, you know, helps to know is because things change. We're not uh, fortune tellers, can't see everything that's going to happen in the future. One of the things that we all know can fluctuate pretty regularly is inflation. Uh, we can take a look at how that can really affect a community's uh, funding plan. Robert, let's try uh, let's try five percent and see what happens. Okay, we had a few years of very high inflation recently, and question here is it going to be five percent inflation for all thirty years? Which this is that's what we're going to do here, or we're going to use a different number? But watch what a big change this makes. Okay, we save that, go back here. And instead of 3% inflation, if we assume 5% inflation, that plan that so nicely was a full funding plan a moment ago is going to end up crashing and burning. Yeah, it's important to note that we don't expect 3% or 5% inflation over the next 30 years. Um, but it is good to be able to play with the numbers and see what happens if inflation stays high uh, a little bit longer term. Hey, let's um, let's yeah, let, can we, let's set this back to normal and then want to play with interest? Yeah, let's see what interest can do. I've seen I've seen some pretty high yield bearing interest accounts, but uh, let's say maybe three and a half, maybe 4% interest. Let's go for it. Let's save that. Move over here to recommendations. Wow. That 4890 that was only getting you to fully funded, look how that overshoots now when you add the help of the bank to get all that extra interest. So, um, one thing I like to do that was 4890, what's now a full funding plan, 4220. So 4890 to 4220, $670. So you ask yourself, is it worth the time spent going to the bank and getting some higher interest bearing vehicles for your reserve funds? The answer is clearly yes. That's an extra $670 a month for your association. And how much money does this place have? They have almost 300000 And look here. They're not going to be spending all of that until uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. So yeah, it's probably pretty safe for them to tie up a bunch of it in a higher interest bearing savings account. Yeah, I, like I think uh, the homeowners can be responsible and talk to a financial planner, make sure that the accounts that they've got, they can withdraw when they need them. And yeah, do, do some good things for your homeowners. I think that they'd really appreciate that. Uh, 300000 seems like a lot of 
good starting cash. We didn't have quite that much coming in. Okay. What do you say? What number? Knock off another hundred. Let's say 192. One instead of 292. Okay. They were what? Weren't they about 70% funded? Mm-hmm. I think they were. Okay. So what happens here? Ooh. Yeah. They get a little dangerous. So they are yep. 47% funded. So they're in that middle range here. And that uh, future looks so rosy at 4220. Now it doesn't look so rosy to fully fund. It's going to be about 4670. Yeah. So just a bunch of trade offs here. When you have less cash to start with, you're, it's almost like getting on the freeway. If you start real slow, you have to step on the gas pretty hard to get up to freeway speed. And this association, uh, we started them with $100,000 less. And they're going to need to stand on the accelerator a little bit with higher reserve transfers for a little while to build up the strength of their reserve fund. Let's make it really tough on them. Let's say it's oh. 92. Oh, yikes. What did you have for breakfast today? Okay. 92, they crash and burn. And that's still... Okay. Now we get into some complications. They don't want to be tying their cash up too much because with only 90 some grand and they have, a, no, they'll be okay. They'll be okay for at least one year. But yeah, yeah that, let's see what the model says. Yeah, and the model is recommending a special assessment. Yeah, so that's, I wanted to bring that out because I think that there's a good opportunity to show that there's a couple different ways we can do this. And this isn't that uncommon. I, I think most associations uh, are probably not where they need to be to start. And so it's not totally uncommon to see, uh, especially if it's your first reserve study, come in lower than you thought you were going to be. And so we have some tools to move them up. Uh, let's talk about an exercise plan first. Okay. Hey, um, I want to do one thing here. We've got 34 units, right? Uh, let's make this a 34,000 dollar special assessment instead of 38 something and it's, like it's pretty much the same yeah not nice round number. this helps you as a board member be able to politically explain to the owners that since we don't have so much money in reserves it's going to cost us a thousand dollars a piece and they scream how you know how can that be and because of years and years of not setting aside enough reserves but look at here your expenses don't start for another year or two or three so maybe you don't need that $34,000 right now. How about we divide that in two? $17,000 the first year, $17,000 the next year. Watch here, see if we're still okay. Yep, we're still okay. And you've cut the special assessment in half, spread it out over 24 months instead of 12 months. So again, like my mom would say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And this is what you can do with you planet. So um, eliminate the special assessments. Try. Right. Let's see. Yeah, we can see what happens. Okay. Without the special assessments, we know there's going to be trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark was our our slang for um, starting low and getting higher. We call it the exercise plan. So let's say. Instead of 3% annual increases, we go with 10% annual increases. We've got to start grabbing some reserve cash, setting some reserve cash aside. Let's try that for five years. And then let's recalculate and see that 10% annual increase. And great. That got us through the trouble year, actually got us too far. So let's, maybe we only need that even less nice okay and now we can start trying to do more fancy things to turn the curve over but you could start with 4900 and a couple of steps steps of progress and you'll get successfully through this pinch of high expenses Yep, and every association is going to be unique, and we're all going to have unique needs. So it's important that we understand the tool, understand the options, make sure that we're able to work within, you know, 
following good business judgment rules and how to operate our association. I like that. Let's get back to the agenda. So that was the Townhome Association, What, how we look at things, how we uh, look at the funding, the influences of different factors. And let's now turn to the high rise, a little more complicated situation, but the same type of basic principles. What are the components? What are your funding tools? What buttons can you press? And how are you going to communicate that to the homeowners and make that plan yours? So here we are, 1981, 134 units, one 33-story building in a major metropolitan area, pool and spa. I know this building, the pool and spa. We're up on the 33rd floor, gorgeous up there, and uh, three elevators serving this property. So let's do the same thing again. Let's go to Planet and pick the high rise. And here we are much longer component list sites and grounds, tennis courts outside, building exterior, building interior, exercise equipment, the pool and deck up in the uh, penthouse level, management office, systems, domestic water, generator, exhaust fans, boilers, cooling tower, elevator, trash compactors, lots of, lots of stuff. So that's exactly what you get at a high rise. Mark, what do you want to do? Yeah, uh, it's a little bit complicated. Just again, we're looking at our component list. It's important to know that, you know, that's where you always got to start. One thing that folks are probably noticing is these great outlines. Uh, not everything that the association is responsible for needs to be funded through reserves. So we've got some things that are maybe they're an unpredictable life and we don't know really when it's going to fail. Maybe we have things that are just lower in cost and they can be funded through an operating expense. So that's why you're going to see some of these great outlines here. Uh, another thing that I've gotten questions on is, hey, this is a 30-year funding plan. What happens if something is going to fail at 35 and we just not plan for it? The answer is no. We got components here that are in the plan for beyond 30 years, but they're not going to get replaced or repaired in the 30 year uh, course of your study. Remember that the study is going to be updated regularly and we need to fund for those things over time. Yeah. So here's one 35 years life, 31 years left, big expense. I think that's $450,000. And I think you said it earlier, we're not talking about saving for the future. All we're talking about is offsetting this year's deterioration taking care of the present. And if every year it takes care of the present, you're going to wake up after 31 years and at least 10 more reserve study updates. And you're going to realize we have the cash. Yeah. I think uh, we're going to be able to see when we go through this example, just kind of different ways we can make sure that the association is taken care of, even when there's things that we didn't see uh, coming when we did this in the, in the first year. So we've got some other phase projects here as well. I think if you scroll down just a little bit. Yeah, so the residential halls. That's a great example of a yeah, like that. project. Good eye. You're going to, you know, fund for a two, a three, and a four, and on down. Because, you know, there's your as your hallways need to be updated, there are not elements that are deteriorating and causing maybe more damage like paint or siding. But the hallways, yeah, you can defer those a little bit and do them in phases to... Again, make it just a little bit more palatable and convenient for your homeowners. Uh, another one that's on here that's kind of unique to a building of this size is consultants. I think it's down a few rows still. I saw uh, infrastructure inspection. Consultants is, do you have a number for me? The nines, 990, I think. Okay. There's a reserve study. No, oh, is that all I have? Maybe it was a different one. So that sometimes you'll fund for consultants, sometimes you'll fund for inspection, sometimes you'll fund for different things that maybe aren't outlined in even the specifically stated maintenance responsibilities of the association, but they're still uh, good things to have and you want to make sure that you're 
doing what you need to do to take care of the property uh, and making sure that you're funding for those kinds of things. I think Robert's yeah. got the infrastructure inspection highlighted. Those can be pretty expensive. Yeah. And if you're not prepared for it, it can really surprise you. Yeah. A reserve component doesn't have to be a thing. It can be an inspection. Here's an annual safety inspection for about 20000 And with this nine-year life cycle, I'm guessing this is a California project. They have special balcony inspections every nine years. That's $82,000, $83,000. And it looks like they just got it done. The lesson learned from that is the consultant, the structural inspection uh, report probably said you need to look at these balconies annually. And it's probably going to be about X amount of dollars. And so that's the kind of information we dial into the reserve study. So now the board and the association is ready for those types of projects. Yeah, I think that's uh, good to know, especially if you're in one of these bigger buildings with, again, same level of experience. Your board is basically volunteers. So it's not like just because you live in a bigger building, you suddenly have more qualified board members. They're just uh, folks who care about their community and are doing a typically thankless job. And they definitely need to be able to do what they need to do with the professional help that they need. Yeah. Volunteer board members make the world go around. I want to look at this uh, significance table and see what jumps out. The repainting is big, caulking the exterior, windows. Oh, gee. Well, you can imagine on a building this size, you're going to get cranes, you're going to need yeah. some scaffolding. It's going to it's going to be pricey. And the 10% almost for the elevators, yeah. A nice spread of projects. But you can see pretty quickly with this table where your money is going to. Nice. Well, let's see how their money is doing. Okay. Let's see. They're starting with about three quarters of a million dollars. Do the same thing for them. They're probably years spent at half a percent or one percent. And let's double check. Yeah, they had a full funding plan that was 38. I'm writing this down. 840 per. It's got to be per month. Yeah, monthly cycle. So $265 a unit for reserve funding. Get some fully funded. How good would it be if they were getting 4%? And the answer is really good. Okay. So How's that? Uh... Yeah, instead of 38,000, we're talking 31,000, 32,000. That's. That's worth a trip to the bank. Sure. <laughs> what is that? Uh, what does that baseline look like? Just so we know okay. what the bottom is. Not that we're trying to get there. Yeah. Um, okay. So full funding is thirty-one nine. I'm gonna write that down. Thirty-one nine. Twenty. If you just want to stay cash positive. Twenty-six six fifty. So that's their kind of window. You want to be above 26650 and as close to thirty one or $32,000 as you can get. And you wonder, yep. what, what about if we just get up to you know 60% funded or something? And let's, let's just try 30 grand per month. Actually, that's not a bad solution. And so yep. this is how you and the board can try to decide what can we do? How much can we do it? And you can see they're going at a 3% increase and then settling down to just a half a percent later on to flatten the curve out. Lots of things you can do. Yep. And I asked about the baseline because I kind of wanted to show, can we maybe give them a surprise expense? Something that maybe when they went up to paint, uh, they discovered some spalling on the side of the building that they had to repair that. Oh, yikes. Okay, you know, let's do that. Building exterior, nice big expense. Let's say that instead of this being four years away, it's zero. And let's see what that does. See if we can see that.
$500,000 expense in the first year. That'll make a difference. Yeah. Wish I could say it never happened. Yeah. Um, okay. They are still okay with this funding plan because it's just moving that expense around. Let's see. Let's do one more thing. Let's add a component. Where was that? That was the repaint 533. Let's add a component. Call it um, 534. And we'll call it um, spalling. Thirty years, zero, and um, quarter million dollars. Ouch! Yeah. So there's the spalling repairs. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's going to be a painful initial year, and sometimes the building just hurts, and it. Yep. That nothing you can do and so what do you do well um, that's going to suck a lot of your money they were starting with three quarters of a million dollars they're going to spend 500 grand just in the first year so instead of at 30 grand being a, a getting up to 60% level they're getting a lot of their cash sucked out and um, could be a oh and last last week here, let's suppose instead of quarter three quarters of a million, they had about five hundred thousand. Make it a little tighter on them. Yeah, you can see what sometimes you just don't have much money and things get tight, and yeah. things are going to be tight at this association for the next few years. Yeah, I saw that really just say hey. You're going to be tempted to go to baseline. You're going to be tempted to hit the baseline solver and set your assessments there. And all you're doing is really opening yourself up to a lot of risk. Uh, with the, and Robert mentioned it earlier, uh, it's a different webinar, but the difference between a component method funding and a cash flow method funding, you're going to be in, in better shape. And over the long term, you're going to be taken care of. Uh, but as you get to that 70% funded, your special assessment risk really drops down to about 1% or less. So be just be very careful about hitting that baseline solver and, and saying we're going to live on a hope and a prayer. Yeah. Okay. Let's turn the corner now and let's finish off the high rise and we'll turn to the summary section of our webinar. We will bring this program today in for a landing, talk about some of the bigger picture. What have we learned here? Well, one thing I hope you learned is that there is no secret sauce or guesses. We're talking about current costs, current expectations for what will happen after we wait a few more years. Learning that owning real estate is expensive and ignoring the cost of deterioration doesn't make that cost go away. You can cross your fingers and take good care of the building and that will minimize your chance of getting a surprise like learning that the exterior building is spalling because you weren't painting on a very good schedule. But for most associations, expect reserve funding to be 15 to 40% of your total budget. And it sounds expensive, but the leverage is powerful. For those associations that are 70% funded or higher, they regularly enjoy 12% higher home values than associations that are in the 0 to 30% funded range. So may sound like you're putting more cash into the reserve fund, but it's going back into your pocket with higher home values. And you know, that's, that's what we do here at Association Reserves. We're comfortable with the numbers. We guide our clients toward that safe and successful future. And that's based on the backbone of 80,000 reserve studies that we've completed now. You can go to our website at reservestudy.com. If you want to get us on your team at the top right of our homepage, You'll see an opportunity to click a link and that'll uh, give you to the request a proposal where you'll be able to get a proposal and find out exactly what it costs to have us working for you. And you plan it, just a reminder, access is free for that budget season with every completed professional engagement. You can do this with your reserve study or for all the clients um, 
associations that are not our professional clients, they can get access to UPlanet and do their own testing for $399 again on a subscription basis. We have a great book called Understanding Reserves. Again, we want to set you up for success. I'll put a link to chapter one so you can read that chapter for free, see if it's something of interest to you. I'll put that link to chapter one in the outline that we prepare. And if you want more free resources, you can sign into our YouTube channel, full videos, guest experts, answers to specific questions, a lot of great material there. And a weekly podcast that we launched earlier this year for board members. It's called HOA Insights, Common Sense for Common Areas. 30 minutes a week providing encouragement that will equip you to do that hard work that you do for your association. Preparing you for the next board meeting, giving you insights, hearing from guest experts, hearing from board member heroes. It's a great new resource for you as board members. You can subscribe from all major podcast platforms, or you can watch it on our YouTube channel, or listen right from our uh, podcast website, hoainsights.org. And with that, we are at the end of today's prepared content, and I'll turn the microphone over to Paige, who will coordinate our Q&A time together.